All right, so the easiest way to get you guys acquainted with modeling is to just kind of jump in there and just do it. So I'll go ahead and open the latest version of Blender. And here we are with the same preps from last time. So before I started the video, I um, reloaded my old settings just to make sure. But anyways, these are the headphones we're going to be dealing with. And so I have a folder here of my references. And these are the headphones, so I'll just... Um, bring Blender out of full screen and we'll just make our own custom layout for this. You know, just duplicate this. We'll just call this um, model in, you know, with an N on it. And we'll just split this view, turn this into a, um, let's see, image editor. And we're just gonna drag our image, which I just dragged this image from uh, Firefox into here, renamed it cause it got the name funny. And with our image here, we can click on the pin and I'll just make sure that this image stays here no matter what. And of course, if we wanted to, we could collapse these views. So, you know, we'll maximize the window and then we'll super max the window. And we want to split this in half so it fits exactly this. So we have two timelines, but now we can merge this timeline away. And we actually don't even need this timeline so we can merge that one away. And we'll merge away our properties and we'll merge away our outliner. We'll have just our headphones and just our modeling. And if we need our properties, we can just jump back to layout, but we're just going to be modeling. So, and I want to keep an eye on these headphones. You know, we're just going to be eyeballing this and so just kind of talking about it casually as we're working. So no, no rush, no, no riot, no fuss, you know, so not completely going for absolute accuracy, but you know, we'll do the best we can. And, um, Let's have some fun here. So uh, let me make sure my keystrokes display is on. We'll give that a moment to pop up. I'm using this program called KeyPress, which is spelled Q-I Press. You can buy it for like 15 bucks. And so now you can see what buttons I'm pressing. So with this cube deselected, we can just click to select it, press X, delete it. And we're gonna bring in a plane and since we're just using general modeling, we'll just have an edit mode SY2, maybe SY1.5. So whenever you're scaling and rotating things, you can either rotate and move your mouse, or you can rotate and hold control to snap it to increments, or you can just type in numbers like 90. You can even do like um, mathematical additive things in here, like I can do 90 plus five or um, I guess in this case it just added 905 to it but it used to be uh, additive where you could do math in it like 90 degrees plus 5 degrees and it give you 95 degrees but I'll have to check into that so uh, for this we're definitely going to need our our modifier panel so instead of making a new layout we're just going to split this here and we're just going to have fun with layouts while we're working you know we'll probably end up with the same layout that we just turned away you know where we need our outliner so we'll just put our outliner here, you know, just, just being weird here. But with this, we can now go in and use the bevel modifier. And since this is a um, 2D shape, it's not gonna do anything. And the shape that we're going for is this. So if we change this to only vertices, you can now see that we can bring this in. But, um, you know, we can only go so far because of the clamp overlap. If we turn this off, you can see that I can now exceed the limits of the bevel so I can bevel and then overshoot it dramatically. And so sometimes that's useful in cases where you're dealing with angles. Absolutely. Uh, you want to turn that thing off, but in this case, we'll keep clamp overlap on and then roll up our segments, which will give us something like this. And so I got about 14 segments, you know, uh, we're just kind of eyeballing it here, you know, maybe 16. I like to go with an even number and we'll also put a solidify on here. And with the solidify, we'll just adjust the thickness. And I also like to play with the uh, offset as well. But what we'll do is actually duplicate this and then play with the offset and turn it to negative. So now when we adjust the uh, thickness, we're pushing it the opposite way, kind of creating two pieces at the same time here. So, I mean, as you work, you kind of want to be thinking in these terms. So, I mean, you know, the fundamentals of this lesson is like kind of just to show you modifiers in a nutshell. Under a quick favorites, I could see that shade smooth is still there. And if we hit that, we can see that 
this model is not going to be the best shaded. So under normals, we'll hit auto smooth and set our angle to 30. And right here, you can see that there's a bit of a merge conflict. In fact, we turn on auto smooth here, use Q for set smooth. If you didn't put set smooth in your Q menu, you can do that where, right here by just right clicking and just adding it to quick favorites, which is something that we did in a previous lesson. So we'll go and look at these modifiers and really I can just tell you in advance that these two modifiers are fine, but we need to weld that vertice. So if we put a weld on here, you can see that it, it takes care of it. And we'll do the same thing here. We'll just put a weld and weld is just, you know, great. It just does the job. And so because of that, we can actually uh, begin working forward. So we can keep this thing non-destructive, but really I'm of the opinion that you got to break a few eggs. So we'll just control A, visual geometry to mesh, and we'll grab this, uh, control G, add it to a vertex group, and we'll bevel that. So we'll change that to a vertex group, choose the group that we made with control G, in edit mode, you can just select a face and press control G to add it to a vertex group. And if you need to view that vertex group, that information is actually shown, let's see right here under vertex groups, but we can get into that more depth later. So now we have our bevel going here on just this face that we can adjust. And so what I wanna do here is actually copy this. And instead of beveling a vertex group, we wanna bevel an angle. And we'll set it to like 20 and turn off clamp overlap and just bring this in and you can't see it very good because uh wireframe is not being displayed here in the top under viewport overlays we can actually turn on wireframe and look at this for a moment and see what we're getting here so we'll just put a few more segments and you can see the shading kind of get a little tough that's where hard and normals comes in so we'll do the same thing to this um, instead of breaking it up we're just going to add an additional bevel on here and we'll set it to angle lower the offset and i could tell you my general line of work that this is something that um you know if you're get if you're watching me and you're thinking wow this is um a thing yeah it sure is and a lot of people have worked in this field to attempt to automate this stuff but really um learning the fundamentals and going through the um, the blood and turmoil of learning this stuff is also essential. So we're gonna select this piece and I'll show you a, a way I like to work and that's just Shift D, duplicate, and then Control A, visual geometry to mesh to apply everything. And then we'll press three, grab this edge loop and press Control I to select the inverted geometry X and delete that. And really we've just created this piece here without getting um, too complicated. Like all I want to do is make a duplicate extraction of this to begin making this piece here. And I saw this as the easiest route. So another interesting trick I wanna show you in Blender is selecting uh, edges and you can press V. And the thing about V is uh, I wanna rip this in this direction. So where your mouse is placed is essential. So if I press V, you can see I ripped this and so this geometry is no longer connected. So I basically what I did here is I ripped it and then canceled it. And by canceling it, it places it where it started, but it still ripped it. So I can just select that, delete the vertices, and it's just fine. So we'll press I, inset, and we'll select um, this piece here. We'll press I, inset it again, just selecting all the geo. I just wanted to make sure it had just a little bit of trim, not too much though. Um, you know, we're doing fan art of this reference, but of course at the end, I like to brand the stuff uniquely. So we're still working here and it looks like we actually deleted half of this and we didn't want to. So, you know, let's just use uh, symmetrize. In fact, I believe it's in the right click menu. Maybe it's under the mesh menu. Sometimes I like to just check these things out in Blender, see where they are, see how hard they are to locate because a large degree of automation has been done for this. So here we are with Symmetrize, we click it, it doesn't show the right one. So we press F9 
in order to bring up our selector here for the uh, tool options if you click it'll go away just a forewarning and now we have symmetrized it the way we want we could have used a mirror modifier but we're not trying to get into that yet so what i'll do here is press 2 to go to edge mode and we'll select this edge and this edge press ctrl g add it to a vertex group and we're going to bevel it again only vertices only this vertex group and we're just going to bevel it to the max give it I would say about six segments should do it and we'll hit it with a solidify and so you can see that the shading of this got a little bit weird which brings me to the next point uh, mesh data so when we click the hard and normals on this we actually begin modifying the normals of this mesh which is just appropriate for whenever you're dealing with shading based things However, whenever we duplicate and applied it, we actually applied um, normal data to this, which is causing the shading to look a little off. So to undo that, you can actually go under object data and under geometry data, you can just clear the custom split normals data. And so here we are going back, adjusting our thickness here. And so we're kind of at an impasse. Uh, what I want to do is bevel the outside, but I don't want to bevel the inside. So, you know, let's just control a visual geometry to mesh. Let's select all of this. So I'm selecting this face control click here, control click here, just walking it and we'll press shift tilde, which appears to have been mapped to the hotkey of, let's see, select boundary loop. So if you didn't set that up previously, I would right click this. Uh, change set the hotkey to shift tilde if you have a different keyboard I would just set it to whatever is in your tilde position but it really helps you get these boundaries which in this case we want to uh, control E and choose to um, hit it with the bevel weight right here edge bevel weight and you can see me getting blind by the menus every time I look at them so we'll add a bevel to this except we'll change this one to be weight and we'll adjust the offset maybe turn off clamp overlap and let's see what we get here so far so good looking very good right here not good and why is that because the weld modifier is needed and this is one of the reasons why it was so crucial that it was added to blender is that before we used to use also a myriad of hacks and tricks to avoid these situations when really um, a simple modifier can just do it for you. So if you're wondering why I'm not using like an old blender or something like that, I mean, come on, <laughs> why would I do that? Um, when we have, um, the issue solved in later iteration. So, you know, um, we're working like non-destructively, but also destructively at the same time. If you're crafty and you're willing to fight blender a little bit and have a bit of a struggle fest you can make it work for you. But for me, I like to uh, keep it simple. So to create the shape of the headphones, I'm just going to use a curve. So shift a circle RX. Sometimes uh, Bezier circles can come in handy. We'll just move this point down. Actually, let's take these two and just S X to scale them on the X axis exclusively. And then we can drag this one down and grab these two handles and just scale them in to just kind of taper our headphones here. So this is kind of a good shape right here. And what I'll do is we could extrude it through this or we can use modifiers. We've been using modifiers this whole time. Let's put a screw on it. You're probably wondering, hey, what, what, what are you gonna do with a screw? Well, let's control A, apply to rotation. And we don't want it to screw like that. So we want it to use uh, zero degrees and we want to screw it not on the Z axis, but we want to screw it on the Y. So here we are so far so good. So really, um, I would like to reduce the amount of segments going on in here. It's so dense, you know, but also I would like to uh, break this handle so it's not continuous. I mean, right now it's so continuous and it doesn't have to be. Also, uh, mirroring would be good at this point because I don't want to lose my center origin. So let's just put a mirror on this and we'll mirror it across on the Y axis and we'll use bisect mirror along with flip. You can see that flip actually gets rid of it. So we don't want to use flip. 
but that's what flip is for is in case that you're using the wrong axis and because of our order now you can see that i'm springing it both ways so you know this style of modeling isn't like the norm i could do this just using all modeling tools and we'd be done already but we're, we're having fun here and so i'm going to select this handle and we're going to try choosing um toggle cyclic where is it at? it's probably in the right click menu i believe i saw it not long ago right here and we can see that it ends it right there which we don't want so it's the easiest way for us to uh, go about this is um you know i would just apply it and just call it a day like uh when it comes to non-destructive i i have patience until i don't and then i just move on like right here i could just convert this to a mesh and we just go in front mode grab these verts uh, alternatively i could be uh introducing y'all to booleans right about now but i'm trying to save y'all from that immediately um we are going to get to that and so here's our phone so far and so we can get even more creative with this as we're going but what i'll do is hit this with a solidify give it some thickness and let's duplicate it, turn the offset the opposite way. And we have both our inner and outer headphones here, just kind of utilizing the same tricks over and over. And we'll turn on auto smooth for both of these now that they're meshes. Now that they're meshes, we can deal with them properly. And so the interior one has a little bit more thickness, or well, a lot more thickness, it's like that. And the outer one, is um you know so 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 we'll get the thickness and then we'll do a little bit of general modeling to kind of shape it and then if it's still isn't the right shape we can always use lattices but we're just having fun with modeling of course there is no right or wrong way but i do of course want everyone to be able to make what they uh, set their heart after so we could do this a couple of different ways i'm going to actually duplicate this and we will just play with our parameters here. So we'll push it all the way out. Maybe push it all the way in. Let's see what we can get here. Let's see if we can get it all the way outwards. I mean, sometimes this stuff can be just a little bit tricky, but you know, like I said, there is no right or wrong way. And I'm also just eyeballing this. So that looks about correct. So we'll just control A, visual geometry to mesh. And so we'll just grab this loop, control plus, control plus to grow our selection. Maybe control plus one more time, really just eyeballing the picture here. And we'll press control I, remove those faces with X, delete faces. And this is what we have. So if I had um, a certain tool, I would utilize a scene selection, but instead we'll press forward slash to take this in the uh, local mode and I'll press C to just circle select this. And we could probably just alt S, just push it just a little bit. And you know, you won't tell anybody I did that. And now we have the shape that I'm going after here. And so I'm gonna select all three of these pieces and we're just going to rotate them 90, shift R to repeat it, R, Z, 9, 0, shift R to repeat it. Just rotating this thing around and around till I get it just how I want it. However, before I actually do this, um, you know, we'll, we'll keep it at the center, but I want to place an empty. And we'll use the empty as our um, parent because it'll just be easier that way. Because we still have mirroring to do. We still have more work to do. And we're making some big headphones. You know, like I said, these are kind of some stylized headphones and I'm just eyeballing these pictures. So, you know, fingers crossed that uh, we get a good result here. However, I'm, I'm confident. So what we want is for this to be the same thickness as that. So they uh, can be merged together. Believe me, it won't be easy, but I do want to show how, you know, you're supposed to model. 
or at least the way that I propose that um, you know you're supposed to model. So we'll take these two into local mode. We'll just talk about them. So I could select this edge, GG, slide it up. You know that'll get me up some ways. Um, you know I could look at it in side mode, and you know really I look at it in side mode. And I see the opportunity to press K to knife and press Z to cut all the way through to mesh. And then use our old buddy rip and control l and re remove that and you know we almost did it you guys except we um are sticking out so let's bring that in ever so you know we can actually do it precisely and the way that you would do that is we can select this edge i guess we can't select an edge all right let's try with a face shift and i'm just pressing shift numpad in order to move my selection around and so instead of going through all that we just gotta ask ourselves how important is it to uh, be that 100 percent accurate and there's always someone in the audience who's gonna be like yeah 100 percent but by the end of it this will be such a minor area and we can also reflatten it at the end if we get too off but i have i'm just gonna use my eyeball and just get that flush inside of it that's all that we're going for. But before we start um, transitioning into subdivision, we want to um, first make some connections here, like Death Stranding, except better than Death Stranding. My apologies to um, England who played it. So we'll go ahead and uh, connect these points here. And you can see that the bevel is just not going to let me to an extent. So let's just go ahead and convert this geometry to mesh. And now let's, um, let's actually, let's go back a step. Let's remove our line work and then we apply it. And notice that now our line work was perfect. So the line work that we added actually complicated the apply and affected the solve. And so I just want y'all to know that you know you're able to affect the solve through the work that you do geometrically in blender and also some of these lines are just am i sure that they're going across to the right parties all right and so we'll just add a point here bevel it j select these two points j select th these two j these two maybe not j but we'll select those two and definitely press j select those two j it doesn't matter that we're uh dealing with triangles on this flat surface but what does matter is i don't want to do that to the other side so we're just going to once again symmetrize let's see where's our buddy symmetrize at it should be under here symmetrize and it's already on the right side if we uh, control one add sub d you can see that you know it almost works so what we'll need to do is actually select our sharp edges increase them so i will select sharp edges control e edge crease set to one and now when i sub d you can see that the form isn't lost and we need the form to be held for whenever we um, merge these two together. So let's try it the easy way. We'll just join them in edit mode. And let's see if um, Blender's unions will help us out with this. Also, I can see I gave this way more curvature than this piece here. Like, in fact, I should just grab these and just control B bevel them just a little bit, just give them a little bit of roundness. However, you know, whenever you're doing that, it's kind of, um, inaccurate there's better ways you can round a surface like subdivision which we're using in fact before i actually do this i'm going to just alt select every other edge which i'm sure there's someone out there who's watching and has noticed that you know there's probably a faster way to actually select every other edge and that i'm just doing it in the slowest way possible wasting clicks and that's the good good part about blenders there's always an armchair expert out there waiting to help you. So with this mesh selected, 
We're just going to go for union. Uh, let's see, boolean. Let's see, intersect boolean. We'll change this to union. And if it all works out, we have a connection without any of the uh, fuss. And we do. So that is a success. We'll alt and merge to last. We will not be working on the other side anymore. So I'm just going to look at in top view, draw a box over this geometry with after pressing uh, Alt Z to see through it. And we'll just X delete that. And we're just going to mirror this to the other side. Clipping. We'll, we'll turn on clipping and we don't need to turn on a bisect flip, you know, just letting you know that's always there for you. In case the mirror is on the wrong side, talking about you right-handed people out there. So we'll, we'll select this one did not make the connection. In fact, I don't think any of this stuff made the connection. We're just going to have to make it manually. So that's us just utilizing the power of the F2 plugin right here. When I press F, it's just going to correctively, um, predictably fill that because that's what it predicts that I would want to fill there. We'll select those two and just connect that, making that a connection. We'll make this a connection as well and we can just fill that so here's our mesh so far so everything so far so good you know we put a crease there you can see what we're getting at here however I think that these aren't real connections there's just something weird about it so we'll just there we go that feels like subdivision however we um really cut in a little bit we didn't give it a lot of room like right here also not the most room but we also can't see it on the headphones either so you know if you're if you're holding these headphones you're like hey that guy didn't do it right you know my bad but for the sake of this we'll just um, keep going so i'm just experimenting with adding loops you can see that because of the density of loops together right there that's just not going to work so I would not recommend doing that. However, we could select this and press shift E and then press one to set to one to crease that. Do the same thing here, just click and select the other endpoint. And we can see what creasing it looks like, which both of those just don't look the best. So we do have this geometry here that we can use to reinforce, but that's also a risky gambit. So. What can we do? Well, we can subdivide, slide over here. We can subdivide here and slide over here. And, and the reason that I'm using subdivide in this context is to uh, kind of be a terminator of sorts for these connections. And it prevents the loop cut from completely circumnavigating the model, which would uh, be problematic. So we'll just make the connection j for the connection and j for the connection here and we're just sliding up sliding down which is kind of how i even out geometry when i make these sort of changes and so to show that trick again we're just going to select both these edges and subdivide which breaks the uh, ability for the edge loop to make it all the way through and now we can actually just make these connections to the best of our ability of course subdivision will convert any triangle into a quad however we may not want our triangles converging at this point uh, create a pole so that's why I'm uh, offsetting it as you see me doing now which gives me a smoother transition there resulting in a uh, nicer model so sometimes I can get a little um, obsessive with my modeling but I guess that's a uh, strong suit hence me uh, being here teaching you guys a course but we'll um, go ahead and maybe scale this in just you know visually so it's, there's no Z fighting and with this part we'll lower the thickness but what I want to do is uh, what I would call up resing where we uh, just make this look better. Like right here, we added like two levels of sub D, but that's not enough. If we push it up, 
we can see that that looks better, but we lose our corners, which that's like my main beef with subdivision as a modifier is that if you don't have geometry here reinforcing your corners, they get lost. You know, your corners become arcs unless there's something there to specify it. So we'll use our old press A to select everything, shift tilde, uh, shift E for crease, and now we have a um, you know subdivided model that can look good in a close-up but also um, be made looking lower if we need to and we're not gonna need it looking lower I'll only focus on making beautiful renders so we'll add a bevel modifier on here and we'll lower the thickness and adjust the segments to be three and there's a bit of geo here of course due to subdivision so that's something important to keep in mind if you're trying to give this a large bevel we can turn on wireframe and you can see what i'm saying however you can see here that i should have been looking at my um, modifier because i didn't even set it to angle or else we wouldn't even be dealing with this none is just a tragedy no one should ever use none i mean maybe there's a use for it i haven't found it but that is a better looking asset. So now we come out and our handle's coming together. However, this handle is actually inside of this thing as well. And who's to say that it even goes in so deep? So we can just select this piece down here, Control plus, uh, select that piece, Control plus, and X, delete faces. And you know we could sh Shift E, recrease that, and that's a that's a good looking piece right there. Of course, uh, we don't want to do the same work over again, and I don't even want to symmetrize. So we'll use a mirror, and we'll turn on bisect, and we'll turn on flip, and now both sides are mirrored correctly. So now that leaves us just needing to get this piece inside of this piece. So we'll just move it. You know, don't tell anyone I did that pretty please and we also want to get this clip area which I don't think I modeled it in there but what I'll do is actually uh, do that now but another thing is that you know I got these pieces here that are mirrored but let's say I wanted to actually mirror them all the way across to the other side as well so we'll shift a add another empty and you know we could just select one of these and just put a mirror modifier on it and we'll select the empty and you're done. And we do the same thing here, put a mirror, select the empty with the eyedropper and we're done. So doing it to all these parts uh, repetitively definitely has built some character for me. Um, it makes it slightly more exhausting to do these because my, my primary field of work is in the uh, field of automating blenders to uh, take up less keystrokes. And so I hope that uh, as we progress that I get to talk about some of that stuff. So we'll um, rip this piece, L, P, you know, for Lincoln Park. And, you know, for this one, we want to give it thickness. So we have all these modifiers on it. Let's just add one more, solidify, and we'll push it out like so. And you see that this thing has like the worst slant ever. You know, it's going to be so hard to get like that double bevel uh, action happening, but it's in the thing. And I like to take up some of these challenges whenever I'm modeling. I like to pick a certain battle to uh, obsess over. So I'm, I'm notorious for uh, sometimes taking way too long on a particular model because I'm obsessed with the, the right way it was supposed to have been done or how it was uh, originally done. But... You know that right there looks good and we could even put additional edge loops in here to truly control that curvature if we wanted to and just lower the solidification we'll handle this in a, kind of a block in style where we'll uh, visit a piece and it will revisit the piece so that way we're not um spending too long on any one thing and the model will uh, always be in a semi finished state so speaking of semi-finished state, this thing is in a very, not any darn well near finished state. So first thing first, uh, you know, besides having a stroke there, 
is uh, we'll clean that piece out, just uh, get rid of what's on the inside. What's on the other side doesn't matter. We'll just select everything and uh, run a symmetrize. Maybe we'll uh, flip it to the other side this time. There we go. And so we'll apply to solidify, but we'll just grab these pieces here and just bring them down. Use middle mouse button to deselect. And right here, we're just really using our old eyeball here. Uh, we have a saying, give it the old $5 eyeball. So that's kind of what we're doing here. We're just looking at the ref and use a middle mouse button, box select. So I'm pressing B to box select, middle mouse button, box drag to deselect uh, loops as I get them into position. However, I want to reselect that, maybe move it up a little bit more. And there's certainly better ways I could do this. But, you know, I just want to show how sometimes I'm difficult. Sometimes I, I'm eyeballing things. So we'll uh, select everything and we'll just symmetrize that because it's just easier than putting another modifier. And let's put a subdivision on here. And so the subdivision is going to be our friend here. But it's only going to help us so far. So right here, we want to crease that. We want to crease that. We don't even care what happens in here, but we'll crease that. You know, we'll select everything, re-symmetrize. And you can see how symmetrize is so useful that we probably want to map that to uh, alt X, just so we can uh, just select things, symmetrize, and we'll just adjust it as needed. And that's how quickly it is to uh, add, a, add a new hotkey to your life. So. I always recommend that people stick with the vanilla defaults when it comes to uh, getting acquainted with Blender. You know this groove right here, tricky part. Instead, you know I could use a boolean and then a bevel, but instead let's uh, let's model it. You know because that's tricky. I like to turn off this button right here on on subdivisions, which uh, makes it not show in edit mode. It allows me to focus. So we're just going to use knife. I'll press C and then press Z to cut through. You can see it get dark whenever I do that, letting me know that I am cutting through. And so we'll uh, see, and then we'll press C to constrain it and cut all the way across. Doesn't matter what we do on the other side, but we'll select everything Alt X. You see how it's just symmetrized without us having to go and locate the button. So Blender is, is still very powerful with hotkeys. With all these selected, we're just gonna delete those points and we're just gonna make these easy connections here and select everything Alt X and we'll just FF to fill that one, two, three loops in here with control R, roll the mouse, F, 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 select all Alt X, that side's taken care of. And we can make a choice here, either put a loop or not put a loop. And I'm just gonna put a loop, you know, this mesh has been through a lot. So we'll just give it a loop and then I'll symmetrize it again. And so symmetrizing gets old, you know, you see me having to press it over and over and over. And it'd probably be easier for me to use a mirror modifier. Like right here, I'll just shift E to crease that, but we'll select everything and Alt X to um, mirror it to the other side. And so that's the piece right there pretty much, you guys. Like, um, I mean, you know, probably could make it even tighter. I mean, we are eyeballing this thing. So I'll be uh, visually seeing corrections on it until the end but you know it's, it's really coming together in my opinion in fact we'll bring that in uh, select everything alt x and that's our shape so if we put a bevel on here it's beveling everything it should at least jump to angle by default and we want to bevel at an angle of 60 we want to bevel at about three segments And we turn off clamp overlap. We can actually see everywhere that's being beveled. I mean, that's not why you would turn it off, but we can see that these are all the 60 degree segment areas. In fact, if we uh, raise the subdiv amount, we can get looking better. And that's not a bad looking result right there um, for us just really getting started. I mean, this is like varying levels of work. Like, I mean, I usually do like the uh, speed block in, which is kind of this thing. I would be done in like 15 minutes if I wasn't recording. So we'll shift D, control A, 
And instead of using control A, let's see what we can do with these modifiers. Oh, not a lot. Um, you know what would be funny is if we um, copy, but apply to solidify, which I know what you're thinking, like, you know, what's that? You know, I actually want to select that face. And we want to put the cursor there and delete these other faces. And we want to set the origin to the cursor. So set origin to the 3D cursor. And this will allow us to actually now push this inward. So I kind of just played off of the thickness of the solidify. I mean, I was going to just start doing something else a little bit more involved, but I realized that this was an easier way to get to our ideal solution was just copying it using its origin. But some of these advanced concepts can be a little bit hard to explain sometimes. So we'll apply the bevel here. We'll apply the weld, solidify, and that leaves us here. So we can actually select this, press I to inset, and we're just going to delete that. And we'll delete that too. In fact, we'll select this ring, control I, delete everything that's not attached. And we're just going to put a solidify on it again. And you can see that there are some normals uh, being applied here. Maybe I need to shade smooth, but something here is affecting my normals. Probably this thing, even though it's not beveling anything, it's affecting my normals. So just a heads up, you got to watch it with these modifiers, but modifiers can be fun for helping you model. You just got to uh, be quite aware of what's going on with your modifiers as you're working. So continuing on here, um, what we can do is select this face and actually orient our view to it. And you can see that the other side is in the way. So I'll press numpad slash to go in local mode. And if we turn off these third modifiers, it means that when I go in local mode, it's just me. Now I can just select this loop and just scale it to just get the scale I want. And that'll do it without making anything weird. Just looking to make sure there's no scaling issues. So let's say we were um, uprising this thing, you know. So we got to be creative with the modifiers we apply because we, we could apply to solidify, but we can't apply to mirror. And we could put a subdivision on it, but this time we actually probably want to use loops too. I keep it under control. And you can see the shading getting a little tough as we're playing with it. And one way to handle that is to either turn off auto smooth, which will keep the smooth at the you know default shading, or you can keep auto smooth on, set this like 60 or 90, but really it doesn't matter for this. Um, I'll show you why, because we're gonna use a little subdivision modeling for this. Uh, it's just a cushion piece, it's kind of soft looking. So with this loop that I added with control R, I'm just gonna control B bevel it, add one loop, grab this loop, Alt S, push that in, and we'll just put loops around it. And this is part of the bane of sub D's existence that drives me nuts. But, um, you know, because I'm so acquainted with the rules, I, I'm able to uh, use it pretty well to my advantage. So, you know, that little trick of like putting loops in and then sucking it in with Alt S, you can have that one for free, you know, and we'll just keep using that to just suck things in. Same thing right here, we're just putting loops in. I could have beveled it and then pushed that loop in, used uh, shift minus to negate my selection. You know, we'll uh, add a loop here, suck that out. Maybe something like that. And that's a pretty good looking piece. You know, we'll add a loop here and Alt S push it out and that'll kind of uh, add a little cushion there. And, you know, subdivision modeling, I just can't stress, is, um, you know, fun and enjoyable. It's just a pain if you are not um, familiar with the rules, I guess is the easiest way to put it. Because, you know, I see a lot of new people coming in. They just avoid subd altogether uh, because of its rule set. And so right here, I want to put a loop down the middle. But subd is um, kind of blocking my vision. And that's why I always turn it off. So I'll select these loops here. You know what, I'll add a loop right here and then we'll grab loops all the way to here. And notice that I grabbed a loop on a flat, grabbed a loop on a flat at the beginning. I was just gonna bevel that. And we wanna put a loop here. 
However, we probably want to put that loop down here so we could scale it in. And now with these loops right here, we just suck that in and we kind of got our area created here. I mean, I could have done that a little more efficiently, but it's, it's a small area of this. I just wanted to try to get that little line in. But we look at this and, you know, we already have such short work made of our little headphones here. So, you know, there's a, a hole in here, but because we're using sub D, sub D is good for, for holes. You know, we delete that, it's gonna turn into a hole. I mean, it's gonna turn into a uh, circle. However, if we uh, delete a face, that will turn into a circle. However, we wanna make sure it's a, a proportional circle. So bringing that in, And, you know, the question is, does that look like a circle to you guys? And there's someone in the audience heckling who's like, no, that's not a circle. But moving on, what we'll do here is shift A at a Bezier curve, RX90, RX90 to rotate in the view. And now that we have that place there, we can actually go to the curve settings in our properties here and just adjust the depth of our curve and then just make sure our handles fit, put our handles, you know, in the hole and then adjust our depth of the curve and curves can be useful too. I can also add a mirror modifier on this curve, even though curves can take less modifiers and we can mirror it across. So these are our headphones so far. We'll go ahead and save this file as, um, one for um for headphones we'll call this uh one four five headphones just because this is probably a, a chapter redo so to prevent this chapter from dragging on too long we'll at least uh you know get it to a nice stopping point so just a couple of more tweaks i'll add a loop here just kind of a alt s push it out which pushes things out on the normals just to really poof these headphones a little bit. And, you know, I'm pretty pr proud of the result that we have here. I mean, this would be what I would consider the level one. The level two would be us getting in and getting even more detailed with this. Uh, for example, like this object, since we're using it empty, I can actually, you know, shift numpad, uh, shift numpad one to adjust my view to this. And I see in the image that, you know, if we're trying to get these buttons to fit, we're gonna to need to move this up. So I'm gonna change my transform orientation to view, which means I can press G and Y and move this up according to my view instead of the like the global axis. Could have also worked locally, but um, view align based working is uh, one of the you know gems of Blender that uh, hopefully uh, others will be able to utilize as well. But, you know, this is a good start. Um, I, I was wanting to um, put a logo on here, but it began getting incredibly hot here in my office. So I'll wrap this video up here for now, and I'll see you guys in the next lesson.